We're on page 11 of the chapter 1 to 3 packet, and we're going to be learning about dimensional analysis using conversion factors today. The whole point is to change one unit into another unit. Now, what I'm going to be showing you is basically a tool that you're going to use in your chemistry tool bucket. You need to learn how to use this tool, and then in the future, it'll be up to you when you want to use it. We all agree that one minute equals 60 seconds. This is actually not just a verbal statement, but a mathematical statement. It really says 1 times minutes equals 60 times seconds. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this as a mathematical equation. We're going to divide each side by 60 seconds. So on the right side, you'll see that when you divide the numerator and denominator by the same thing, you have 1. The answer is 1. So 1 equals 1 minute divided by 60 seconds, which intuitively hopefully makes sense because the top of the fraction is the same thing as the bottom of the fraction, so they divide out. Now we could have divided by 1 minute instead of by 60 seconds, and then we would have seen this as the answer that 60 seconds over 1 minute equals 1. You can do this with any relationship of equality. You divide each side by one of them, and then you'll see that 1 equals the other side. And you can inverse it mathematically without a problem because 1 over 1 is still 1. So any inversed conversion factor is still equal to 1. Now we're going to use these conversion factors to convert one unit into another. We're going to try to take 36 hours and change it into minutes. Now I know that you could do this problem without the method I'm showing you, but I'm purposely using easy examples so that when you do a harder one in the future, it'll make more sense. Let's recall in math, if you had a problem that said something like 3 times 2 thirds, you could do it the long way and say 3 times 2 is 6 and 6 divided by 3 is 2, or you could do a little shortcut and divide out the 3's and know that the answer would be 2. Well, this concept of dividing out numerator and denominators that are equal is the same concept we're going to use with conversion factors. So I want to eliminate hours. So I need to put it on the bottom so eventually it'll divide out. Now I want to change it into minutes so I can put minutes up here. And when I do that, I have to ask myself, what is the relationship between minutes and hours? And I know that there are 60 minutes in one hour. So now when I divide out the hours, I'm going to be left with minutes. So you simply take 36 times 60. On your calculator, you'll find that it is 2160. And the unit is now going to be minutes. As far as sig figs go, we just use the sig figs of the starting number to see what the ending number is. Because the sig figs of a conversion factor do not affect us. This is not a measurement that we made, this 60 minutes over one hour. This is a definition. This is an exact number. So it's not a measurement that we're making. This was a measurement we made, so the sig figs of this will determine the sig figs of the answer, which in this case has three. Because remember, this zero doesn't count with NAD. There's no decimal point, so ending zeros don't count in this number. There is a decimal in this number, so ending zeros will count. And this also has three significant figures. Now let's try to do the next example, two weeks. And we want to change that into hours. So of course, I want to eliminate weeks by dividing it out. So the weeks has to go on the bottom. And I need to think to myself, hours is a small unit. So I need to get smaller than weeks. The next easy one would be days, since off the top of my head, I don't know how many hours are in a week. So I'm going to put days here. Seven days is one week. We divide out weeks. And if we stop, we'll be in days. But we really want to go to hours. So I'm going to make another conversion, get rid of day, go to hours, and ask myself, what's the relationship? And that comes out to be 24 hours in one day. Now all you have to do is take 2 times 7 times 24. And you're going to find out that that comes out to be 336. So there are 336 hours in two weeks. That's what we were finding out. How many hours are in two weeks? And we did that by the use of our conversion factors. Okay, we'll try one more. We have 5,040 minutes with four significant figures since there's a decimal for the ending zero. And I want to find out how many weeks that is. So I want to get rid of minutes. Now I have to ask myself, are weeks bigger or smaller than minutes? Weeks are big, so I want to get bigger than minutes. Bigger than minutes is hours. 
and I ask myself, what's the relationship between minutes and hours? There are 60 minutes in one hour. So now I divide out minutes, and I'm in hours. I want to get out of hours, so I put it on the bottom to divide out. And I want to get bigger than hours, I'm going to go to days. And there are 24 hours in one day, so I divide out hours. And lastly, I want to eliminate days and go to weeks. And there are seven days in one week. So when I do the math for this, I'm going to take my calculator, and I'm going to take 5,040 divided by 60, divided by 24, divided by 7. Even though these are all being multiplied, they're all in the denominator. So you have two choices. Do what I just said, 5,040 divided by 60, divided by 24, divided by 7. Or if you really, really like to put the time sign, you have to put parentheses here. And you'd have to say 5,040 divided by 60 times 24 times 7 equals. Otherwise, it will not give you the right answer. Well, if you do it correctly, you're going to find out that the answer is 0.5, half of a week. Let's just find our sig figs now. 5,040 has four sig figs because there is a decimal for the ending zero to count. So there are four sig figs. This only has one sig fig because beginning zeros never count. And so this is going to be 0 0.500 weeks, which means that 5,040 minutes is half of a week. Let's review one more thing about this. The whole point of this is to convert between one number and unit to an equivalent number and unit. And so what we realize is that 36 hours is the exact same thing as 2160 minutes. And two weeks is exactly the same thing as 336 hours. And what also makes sense is that the number 36 is smaller than the number 2160, but the unit of hours is bigger than the unit of minutes. So when you have a small number, you'll have a larger unit, and when you have a large number, you'll have a smaller unit in the equality. Again, weeks is a large unit compared to hours, but 336 is a large number compared to 2. And lastly, 5,040 minutes is the same thing as half of a week. If you have a large number with a small unit, it's the same thing as a small number with a large unit. So the moral of the story here, you would treat numbers, I'm sorry, treat units as you would treat numbers. You can divide out units just like you could divide out numbers, and units are your friends because units tell you how to do the problem. The units told you that you need to put minutes on the bottom and hours on the top. And then the units told you to put hours on the bottom and days on the top. And then the units told you to put days on the bottom and weeks on the top. And they also told you where to put the 60, 24, and 7 because you understood that 60 minutes is equal to 1 hour, etc. So the units are your friends in these problems.